sometime between 10.40 and 10.50. Would that have altered your treatment of Michael Jackson? No. Would that have altered the, the result that happened to Michael Jackson? As I said, Mr. Jackson died long before he became a patient that I was personally responsible for. So no, knowing even more information, it is unlikely with that information I would have been able to do something different that would have changed the outcome. And were, when you asked about the medications, were you primarily interested in medications that might be in the system at that point in time? I was interested in all of the available med medical history so that I could best decide how to treat Mr. Jackson. But there was no chance of treating Mr. Jackson, was there, successfully? From what I know now, no, but at the time, I had a 50-year-old male who was dead, and in my mind, there are many other conditions that may cause a cardiac arrest. I therefore asked information on the history so that I could either consider those diagnoses or other treatments. Uh, in your use of uh, propofol, you ever had a patient with slurred speech? Someone who's. I'm going to sustain the objection. Uh, 350, 352. Strike out the answer, please. Uh, did you see uh, or listen at any point in time in the last week uh, Michael Jackson's speech on May 10th at 9:05 a.m.? Jackson, Ralph, Sustain. 350. 352. Can we approach on that one, Your Honor? Yes. Sustain. Patient's eyes are fixed and dilated. They're wide open, mouth open. Patient not breathing, eyes fixed and dilated. Is there any chance of saving that person? Does that patient have a pulse? No pulse. Possibly. What are the chances? Percentage standpoint. Objection, vague speculation. I think there's potentially a lot of variables there. Yes. Sustain. What are the variables? 352. What are the variables? Objection, I'm going to sustain the objection. Same reason. Speculation. Uh, when you talk to Mr. Murray, or Dr. Murray, what was his demeanor like? I wasn't really focusing on him in terms of his demeanor. I was actually focusing on Mr. Jackson. So you were, when you were talking to Dr. Murray, you weren't really paying much attention to what his demeanor was? I was paying attention to what he said, and then I turned my attention to Mr. Jackson. Okay, well, how long was the conversation you had with Dr. Murray? We had multiple brief conversations and discussions throughout the resuscitation. Dr. Murray was present. When you say multiple, how many? I don't recall. When you say brief, how long? It would depend on how many questions I asked at the time. How many questions did you ask at the time? I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Uh, Okay, the first time. What'd you ask him the first time you talked to him? 
I asked him what happened. And uh, what did he say? He reported that Mr. Jackson had been working very hard, that he was, he thought, dehydrated. And he reported, reported he'd given him two milligrams of lorazepam. And then later in the morning, he'd given him two milligrams of lorazepam and then observed the arrest. Okay, and that was in response to your one question. I do not recall two years later how many questions it took to obtain that information or how many specific questions I asked during the course of the more than hour I was taking care of Mr. Jackson where Dr. Murray was present. I was trying to get, find from you the precise question and the precise answer. You're just not capable of doing that? I am not capable two years later of giving the precise wording and precise question and or precise number of questions I asked at the time, no. Okay, well you've, re you've reviewed your records prior to testifying, haven't you? Yes, I have. And, and the rec those records were prepared on the date of, uh, of Michael Jackson's death? There is a note on the chart and a note to the coroner immediately following my treatment. The following morning, I added a late addendum that is a note that is dated at that time, and I don't recall, without looking at the note, the exact time it was written, that provided further details to describe the care that I provided and my medical record for Mr. Jackson. Yes. Have you reviewed that prior to testifying here today? Yes. Does that indicate the precise question and the precise answer? I did not write the precise question or in quote the exact answer on my chart, no. And so right now your, your recollection of the actual conversation and Murray's actual answer to each of those questions would be vague. Objection, Ms. Stacey. Ms. Stacey. Is that true? It would be vague? My testimony is based on the medical chart that I wrote, which provides the information that I wrote as a physician writing a note about the care I provided, which included my handling of the base station call, my handling of the resuscitation, the information I had that was provided by Dr. Murray. I wrote the note at the time so that I would be able to refer to it and not have to recall potentially sort of those details. But as a medical chart, the exact question and the exact answer is not typically written in quotes or dictated specifically. There's nothing in your chart that says that when asked, Dr. Murray said that he'd just given a, a, a dose of lorazepam and then he arrested. Objection B. Is there? Objection B. I'll rule. You may answer. If you can provide me with my medical record, I could read for you the exact words I used. But what I was told and what my char chart reflects was I was told that he had given two milligrams of lazepam and that there was an observed witness, or observed and witness mean the same thing, arrest. The exact word in my note, I couldn't tell you without reading it to you, but I'd be happy to do that. And those are just right together. He'd given him two milligrams of lazepam and watched him arrest. That was the information I had from Dr. Murray when I was told the story of what happened when Michael Jackson died. And the, that was the information that I then asked my follow-up questions on, clarifying questions on, and based my treatment on. Do you, do you have your notes with you? I assume, is there, if you have a copy of the note, I'd be happy to look at it. Um, Mr. Walgroom, the, the exhibit that you showed her, do you have that? I don't have a. I have one copy here, yes. Yes, could I sh see the copy that you showed her? Sure. If counsel's going to mark any exhibit, I'd ask them to use their own because this is my one working copy. I understand.
Dr. Murray also indicated that Mr. Jackson was taking Flomax? That was what I was told, yes. Okay. Would that, would that indicate a, a urinary problem? It is typically used for some sort of urinary problem, yes. So you don't have a recollection of the specific times between doses of the RASPAM, do you? The objection is sustained. Well, that's what your notes say, isn't it? I believe my... But the notes say what? That she doesn't have a recollection or they weren't listed? The specific time between the doses and reason for giving the medication are not recalled by me during the... the active work or resuscitation. I, I can't read the writing. Could, could I approach the witness, Your Honor? Please. <laughs> Which part would you like me to start reading? That, where it says the specific times of doses. Dr. Murray then administered a second two milligram of IV dose of lorazepam and reports witnessing the patient arrest. The specific time between doses and reason for giving the medication are not recalled by me during the active work on resuscitation supervision. Dr. Murray reports he began CPR on scene and 911 was called. Okay, so you, you don't have a, recall, a recollection of the precise time of the doses? Correct. Time, I believe it was, I didn't have a recall of the time between doses. And you wrote this, I believe it's about a six page report the day after. The morning after, yes. Well, this happened in the morning. Well, I guess so. This is on June 25th, so you're talking about the morning of June 26th. I believe that's the date of the note, yes. have just a minute, Your Honor. Please. Did you take the patient's temperature when he came in? I don't recall. Would that be normal to do? At some point, we would definitely take the temperature. Uh, we would need to be a rectal temperature, and I don't know if that was done at all. Um, I would have to look at the nursing code note. <laughs> would that? Would that tell you the time of the cause of death by taking that temperature? No. So 